So today we're going to look at matrices and the fundamental matrices and what a matrix is. Okay, an overview of this topic. So we're going to be looking at understanding matrices and basic operations, including addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication. In the next video we'll look at multiplying matrices together, otherwise known as vector multiplication or cross multiplication, and also looking at the determinant of a matrix. We'll then move on to finding the inverse of a matrix and we can also solve simultaneous equations using matrices. So a matrix in its basic form is just an array of numbers such as this. So on a simple level, it's just a way to organise numbers or values into rows and columns. The power of matrices obviously comes later on from being able to transform linear functions and transformations. Uh, and we can represent linear transformations using matrices, so things like rotations, reflections, enlargements. Uh, we can also use them to solve simultaneous equations. The dimensions of a matrix is its size in terms of its number of rows and columns in that order. So for instance, if we take this matrix 1, 3, minus 7, 4, 0, 5, it's got two rows and it's got three columns, so it's a 2 by 3 matrix. Similarly, the second matrix has 1, 2, 3 rows, so it's 3 by 1 because it's got one column. And this third matrix has just one single row, but it's got three columns, so it's a 1 by 3 matrix row times columns is the order of a matrix. A little bit of notation for matrix, how we name matrices in maths. A matrix can have curly or square brackets. Usually we use curly brackets, but if you ever see a square bracket, it's still a matrix. So here's a normal matrix. The order of this matrix would be two by three, because it's got two rows and three columns. Any matrix which only has one column would also be a column vector. And similarly, a row vector, one row, any number of columns, is a row vector. How we denote matrices in maths? We use capital bold letters to denote a matrix. So for instance, this matrix A equals 1, 6, minus 3. Notice it's a capital bold A. That's a matrix. Another matrix that we could represent C equaling some other matrix, the inverse of P times TP. C would be a matrix. The inverse of P is a matrix. And T and P are also matrices. Here we can name individual elements in a matrix. If we look at this matrix here A, then we use the little letter A. The first number is the row and the second number is the column. So row 1, column 2 is number 1, so A12 equals 1. Similarly, if we look at B23, row 2, column 3 is minus 1. So B23 would be minus 1. In general, we say that's AIG or for matrix B, B, I, J. Okay, let's look at some fundamentals. Adding and subtracting matrices is really easy. You just add each individual element or subtract each individual element and get a new element for the matrix. The size of a matrix will be exactly the same as the one you started with. So for instance, 1, 3, minus 7, 4, 0, 5, plus 6, minus 2, 9, 2, 1, 0, well, we've got 1 plus 6 is 7, 3 plus minus 2 is 1, minus 7 plus 9 is 2, 4 plus 2 is 6, 0 plus 1 is 1, and 5 plus 0 is 0, and 5 plus 0 is 5. Similarly, if I take away these two matrices taken away from each other, 3 take away Q, that's the first element, 0 take away negative 3 is just positive 3. Negative 1 take away negative 1 is negative 2. 2 take away 1 is 1. 0 take away negative 4 is positive 4. And 3 take away 1 is 2. Okay. Obviously it should be clear, but to add or subtract matrices, they have to have the same dimensions. You cannot add a 2 by 3 and a 1 by 3 matrix together because that doesn't make any sense. You have to have the same size. There's two types of multiplication with matrices. First type we're going to look at is the simplest type called scalar multiplication. And in a later video we'll look at normal matrix multiplication or vector multiplication. So scalar multiplication is when we just times a vector by a number. We scale the vector up. Have a look at example one which says three times this vector. We're just times in each element by three. So three times one is three. 
3 threes are 9, 3 nine times minus 7 is minus 21, 3 fours is 12, 3 times nothing is nothing, and 3 times 5 is 15. Similar way if we look at example 2, we've got a equals cube minus 3, 1, 1, minus 4, and 1. So if we wanted to do 2a, we would just times each individual element by 2. So 2q becomes 2q, minus 3 becomes minus 6, 1 becomes 2, 1 becomes 2, minus 4 becomes minus 8, and 1 becomes 2. So looking at example 3, we've got this vector plus k times this vector, and we're saying it equals this vector. So we'll have to do some basic manipulation to work out what k is. So let's just start doing that. For our top element on the left hand side, we're going to have minus 3 plus 2k squared. And for our bottom element, we've got k plus 2k squared. And we're saying that that equals the right hand side, k6. So we've got two vectors that equal each other. So that means this element at the top must equal this element at the top. And this element at the bottom must equal this element at the bottom. So that gives us minus 3 plus 2k squared equals k. And k plus 2k squared equals 6. So that implies, of course, that we've got 2k squared minus k. Minus 3 equals 0. And we've got... 2k squared plus k minus 6 equals 0. So equating both of the equations together simultaneously, 2k squared minus k minus 3 equals 2k squared plus k minus 6. So that implies that we've got minus 2k equals Minus 6 add 3 is minus 3, so k equals 3 over 2. Okay, this, let's look at a few special matrices. Um, a matrix is square if it's got the same number of rows and columns, it looks square. So a 2 by 2 or a 3 by 3 matrix. If we had all the elements of a matrix being 0, then that's called a 0 matrix. All the elements are 0, and you can have... The dimensions are usually clear from the context. You have a 2 by 2, a 3 by 3, a 4 by 4. Any size matrix where all the elements are 0 is a 0 matrix. And the last matrix, which we'll look at in more depth in the next lesson, is the identity matrix. And this is all, always a square matrix, which has the 1s in the leading diagonal and 0 elsewhere. So, for instance, a 3 by 3 identity matrix, we've got the 1s in this diagonal here, then everything else is filled in with 0. The 2 by 2 one is where 1's are here and everything else is 0. We use the identity matrix when we cover matrix multiplication later, but for now when we're just adding matrices or times them by a scalar, the 0 matrix is the one which is more important. Okay, let's look at something called the transpose of a matrix. A with a T in the smaller case, not power of T, but A with a small T, is a transpose of a matrix. And it, all it means is you take the rows and the columns and interchange them. Here's a simple example. If we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we want to transpose it. 1, 2, 3 becomes 1, 2, 3, column. And row 4, 5, 6 becomes column 4, 5, 6. Notice the dimensions of a matrix. If you started off with an M times N matrix, then you get an N times M matrix. In other words, 2 by 3 becomes 3 by 2. Okay, a few important definitions for fundamentals. If the transpose of A equals A, then A is said to be symmetric. Similarly, if the transpose of A now equals minus A, then instead of it being symmetric, it is skew symmetric. Symmetric and skew matrices always must be square. They can never be something like 2 by 3 or 4 by 5. Also, three are square matrix. Here's a couple of examples. Matrix A is symmetric, so let's just check that. If I draw the matrix, so this row becomes the first column, so I can write one, two, three. This row becomes the second column, so I can write two, four, minus seven. And this row become, become the third column, 
which is 3 minus 7 minus 2. You can see here that that equals that with the same matrix. If I worked out the transpose of B, then you would have 0, 2, 3. We would have minus 2, 0, minus 7. And we'd have minus 3, 7, 0. Which you can see quite clearly that each element is the negative of the element in the original matrix. In other words, B transpose is minus B. So B transpose is skew symmetric. A few other things to notice. If you look at the leading diagonal, in the first one, the symmetrical matrix, they can be any numbers. It doesn't make it much of a difference. But what does make a difference is across the diagonal, it's symmetric. That will as a clue for some symmetry. Whereas, if you look at a skew symmetric matrix, the leading diagonal is always filled with zeros. And in fact, if you look across the diagonal, the pairs of numbers are always the inverse of each other. 2 and minus 2, 3 and minus 3, minus 7 and 7. Let's formalise that idea. Looking down here, symmetrical matrices can have any numbers in the main diagonal. However, skew symmetrical zeros, matrices must have zeros on the main diagonal. Okay, a few matrix properties. If we add matrices, addition is commutative. In other words, A plus B always equals B plus A. Or, on the subtraction side, A minus B would equal minus B minus A. Scalar multiplication is distributive over addition and subtraction. So in other words, if I took some number lambda, lambda bracket A plus B equals lambda A plus lambda B. The normal thing that happens when we multiply out brackets. The identity matrix for addition is zero. So the word identity in maths means anything you take where if you put it in, you get the same thing coming out. In other words, A plus zero does equal zero plus A, which does equal A. Okay, let's look at some properties for transposing. So imagine we've got A. If we take the A transpose, and then we transpose it again, we get A back, okay? So let's let's check that, actually. Let's say we've got two matrices, A is 2, 5, minus 1. It should be clear that the transpose of A is 2, 5 becomes 2, 5, minus 1, 0 becomes minus 1, 0. If we transpose that back again, then A transpose transposed again, 2, minus 1, becomes 2 minus 1, 5, 0 becomes 5, 0, which equals A as required. For those of you following the SQA Advanced Higher Maths course, some good exercises to practice. This is a Maths in Action third edition book, uh, Maths in Action 3, and exercise 1 on page 46, and exercise 2 on page 7, which gives you some of the proofs for the transposition properties that we've discussed. See you next time and we will do some matrix multiplication. Stay safe, take care, and goodbye.